Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters and the Elmer team today talking about some of the pitfalls of selling in a trust or probate. Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters and the Elmer team here again with Dana Cannon from Cannon Legal Firm. And today we're going to talk about a couple of the pitfalls that we've both seen when it comes to people selling property that is in a probate or a trust. So thank you again, Dana, for joining us today. Happy to be here. I think it's a great topic. I think a lot of people are misinformed and think that anybody can sell property for them, but that's not necessarily the case when you're dealing with the trust or a probate. Absolutely. And Dana and I are both part of the Estate Planning and Trust Council here in Long Beach. So we spend time every month studying and working to improve and learn and grow about all the changing rules all the time about the, these processes and, and they can be really complicated processes. And yet we both pretty experienced in this field and we see people make very common mistakes all the time. So we thought we would address a couple of those topics. One of the items that we see commonly is that the person who passes may want one of the family members to be able to purchase the property. And sometimes that can cause some conflicts with the other family members. So I thought, Dana, I'd let you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's fairly common that one or more of the family members may want to buy the property um, when mom or dad dies. And um, that can create some strife. There's sometimes some disharmony in the family to begin with. And now mom or dad has passed and there's some, you know, confusion and hurt feelings about the way things are being handled. So I think it's always the best idea to write it down. If you think that one of your kids wants your house and you want them to have it, put it in writing that how they should go about getting it. If you want them to be able to use a portion of their share of the estate as a down payment, um, if you have a price in mind, or if you have a way to establish a price for them to buy it, if you want to leave it to the discretion of the trustee or a trusted realtor to make that decision, how, whatever information you think would be helpful to avoid conflict with the family and make sure that the person that you want to get your property gets it when you die. Great. Thank you. You know, what that brings us to another thing that we see commonly is uh, I see realtors all the time who really have no business uh, listing properties, probates or trusts. They just don't have the experience. They don't know what they're doing with that. How does someone pick? a good realtor other than obviously myself who is experienced with it? Well, I think that kind of goes back to also choosing the right attorney to help you because if you have an experienced attorney, they have a team of people that they've worked with in the past and they know who has their client's best interests at heart and who understands the right way to do it. A lot of people don't understand when you're selling a property in the capacity uh, as a fiduciary, being a trustee or administrator of an estate, that you don't have the same disclosure requirements. You don't have to disclose things about the condition of the property because you're not expected to know them if you didn't live there. So there are, there are many things that the realtor can help you guide you through. There are special forms and you just need to make sure that you get a realtor that understands the process and doesn't jump the gun and try to list the house before you've been appointed by the court or use the wrong forms and have you making disclosures about condition of the property or things that you don't necessarily know anything about. It needs to be sold as is with a qualified realtor for the right commission. If you're in probate court in LA County, it has to be 5%. It can't be more for improved property. They're just things that realtors that do this day in and day out know. It can save you a lot of time, a lot of headache. And if you have an attorney involved that has to review and rewrite everything that the realtor does, it can save you a lot of money because your attorney is charging you by the hour more than likely to review all those documents. So makes good sense to have a good team to help you through the process and trust your attorney or, you know, other professionals that deal with probate and trust to guide you towards the right person. If it's not Melinda, who seems like a no brainer. <laughs> Thank you. You know, one of the other things that we see is disagreements between trustees. So, um, I mean, you and I both have discussed this many times in the past and that having uh, the right person or the right party be a fiduciary or the trustee of an estate is really critical as well. What can you speak to about that? Well, I mean, historically, I mean, I, we've all watched the, you know, the old movies where the oldest son steps up and, you know, becomes the patriarch for the family. And that kind of follows that, that 
that line of thought for estate planning. We are getting away from that. So, you know, people are choosing the family member that maybe is better qualified for the job or, you know, logistically lives closer. But, you know, people don't realize that you don't have to choose a family member. If there's strife in your family, if your, your children don't get along for whatever reason during your lifetime, they're probably not going to get along when you die. So, you know, you want to make sure that you choose a trustee who understands the responsibilities that are involved, the challenges that are going to be involved in trying to manage all of the different personalities in the family and is up to that task. If it doesn't happen to fall on one of the family members that you have, if, the, if you don't have a family member that is able to, you know, meet that standard, there are professional fiduciaries, there are trust companies, there are a multitude of different options that you have to, to name a trustee other than just choosing from your children. And that's great. And that also, I find too, removes that um, personal baggage that people carry from their childhood forward for sure. It can make it a much easier, smoother transaction on the whole family and really kind of keep families together when they're not fighting over it for sure. And then, you know, one of the other things that I notice as well is it feels like there's, we call it ambulance chasers sometimes, but there's a lot of predatory stuff that happens that um, people get lists of people who are selling in probate or trusts and they are going after these people um, somewhat ruthlessly sometimes. So, you know, what advice would you give about dealing with those kinds of people who are pursuing this business from people? Well, this happens a lot. And I warn my clients, especially when we're filing a probate, because everything becomes a matter of public record. And, you know, your address gets out there, you start getting all kinds of mail. It's much like when you buy your first home, and you suddenly are getting, you know, coupons from Home Depot and things like that, that your name is now on a mailing list, and you're getting, you know, ads for realtors, you're getting solicitations from people that you don't even know. So it falls back to, you know, I think if you have a good team of people around you, a good attorney um, that can refer you to a good realtor, trust the advice of those people. Don't don't listen to the the people who, you know, are ambulance chasers. I think that's a really good, you know, um, description of them. They're predatory. They're in it for themselves, especially right now with the market being as competitive as it is. Everybody's looking for, you know, the next house to sell the next investment. And as a fiduciary, you have to remember that this isn't just you you're selling it for. This isn't your common sense that dictates what's a good deal. You are, you're held responsible to the beneficiaries to make sure that you're getting them the best deal. And that includes you know, the commissions, the costs, the, the price, everything. So you need to make sure that you have a good team of people that you can trust on your side and not fall victim to these predatory behaviors and practices of people who really are in it for themselves and don't care whether or not you're left holding the bag for people that down the road are going to be upset with you because you sold it for too little. Absolutely. And I see um, people come to me all the time saying, well, my neighbor told me this or this neighbor down the street said they would buy the property from me and save me money. But ultimately they're just trying to get a deal and looking out for themselves hundred percent. And uh, I think that's really critical to know. So thank you for sharing. If you have any other Absolutely. questions, you can please reach out to Dana. I'll let her give her information. Um, the, my website has all of my information. It's www.cannonlegalfirm.com has my email address, has the ability to set an appointment. I offer free consultations. Uh, That's all on my website. Uh, My email address, I think, is showing up on the uh, screen here now as well. So feel free to contact me. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody anytime. Perfect. And if you have any other questions for us, you can always reach us at 562-316-2915, or you can email me at melinda at theelmerteam.com. Please feel free to forward and share this with your friends. And thank you so much for watching.